Hello, and as always, welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center. Have you ever just had one of those weeks? <clears throat> well, this one is um, heading that direction. Somebody had posted on social media, hey, can you help me visualize slab off? And I said, sure, I can do that. Well, about seven versions of this video that you're about to see later, 40 some emails back and forth with the lab and several embarrassing moments, I think I finally caught it. So without further ado, let's hit the whiteboard. All right, I have a little bit of a tough job ahead of me, but let me see if I can't help you visualize what the concept of slab off is all about. Let's begin with an ordinary prescription. Plus four OU, plus four on the right, plus four on the left. An ordinary pair of single vision glasses. The optician that made this pair of glasses did a really outstanding job. Monocular PDs did an OC height. So the lens OC for each of these is perfectly placed in front of the wearer's pupil. They're looking through the optical center of the lens. So there is no prismatic effect. The lens is there strictly to bend light, push it through the eye and have it hit the retina where it needs to be so that that person can see clearly. What are they seeing clearly? They're seeing the object out there a little bit in the distance. When they look at the object, it's clear, it's crisp, good visual acuity, and they see one of these. Now, what happens when I do this? What happens when I take my right plus four and I make it a measly tiny little plus two, and I take my left lens and I take it from a plus four to a huge, whopping plus eight. What happens then? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Everything's good, life is good. Why? Same reason. They're looking through the OC. Good pair of glasses, made well, even though they have that high prescription, there's a big difference. Looking through the optical center, there's no prismatic effect. Looking out at the world, they see objects as they're supposed to. Now what happens when it's bifocal time? And I have to give them a nice old fashioned straight top 28. Slap off is also done on progressives, but we're gonna work with a straight top 28. Now there's a problem. This is where things get ugly. When they're looking in the distance, they've got that nice, crisp, clean OC they're looking for. They have to leave that to reach the segment. Their eye must leave here and pass through the portion of the lens that actually creates prism, image shift, light shift, to reach the center of the segment in order to read. When they enter this portion of the lens, They get prism. Here's my segment. Here's my segment reading area. Right. What happens to the image viewed through a prism? It is shifted towards the apex because my plus eight is so much more powerful than my plus two. In my brain, I'm gonna have double vision. This lens, this eye is gonna see the object is shifted far more towards the apex than this one is. How do I correct that? How do I get this back to here? Fusion, slab off. Because of the optics involved, I'm going to do the slab off on my most minus or least plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a prism wedge on the back of this lens to bring it to equal out this one. 
This prism wedge is slab off. When I place that wedge on the lower portion of this lens and I mimic this prism amount here, then I can move the perceived object back into one. How much I need to place on the back of this to counteract this is what we're gonna cover next. A few brief housekeeping items before we get into our calculations for today. One, so much of the written material that's out there is quite old. You're going to see a lot about glass, particularly about glass and slab off. The lens blanks that you need to do slab off on glass have been discontinued. Glass slab off is obsolete. So I am asking you to let's get over it and move on. No more glass slab off. Number two, reverse slab off. You're gonna see questions about that. I guarantee there's gonna be a question about it on the ABO. It's really a shortcut technique. They try to mold the slab off amount onto the front surface, the finished front surface of the lens blank, and then the lens gets back surfaced. To get the best results, you wanna do a real slab off and you know, just find a great lab like us and we'll do that for you and you'll have a lot better results. The example I'm about to do is a simple plus eight and a simple plus two, it's a sphere. So we don't have to worry about calculating power in the meridian that we're gonna be working with. When we're working slab off calculations, the power is at 90 that we need. And I know that seems a, little, it seems a little bit weird to me. It seems like it's a little bit off of the 90th, but that's just the way my brain works. If the prescription given, and it has a cylinder amount, is not at 90 or 180, because then you could just do flat transposition, you will need to use the powers and oblique meridians formula or the 30, 45, 60 rule. Chances are pretty good that they may make you work through that before you can work the calculation that we're about to do on the ABO. We have great videos on that on the website and on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, it's now time to figure out how we come up with the amount of that slab off or prism wedge that we're going to put on the back of the lens. I think it would be a whole lot easier if we just called these simple prism problems because that's really all they are. Uh, for some reason, slab off just seems to make everybody, including myself, go crazy. I'm not sure why that is. Parenthesis formula. My goodness, we're all familiar with that. P is equal to H C M times D. It's all we're doing. I've got a right of plus two and a left of a plus eight. My drop or my H C M is 10. Where does 10 come from? If I have my distance OC, the distance from that to the top of my segment, is five millimeters. Generally lenses, straight top bifocals are surfaced with the OC five millimeters above the top of the segment. From the top of the segment to the center of the segment is an additional five millimeters. So there's your total of 10 millimeters of drop or movement down into the part of the lens that creates an error. That's where our 10 comes from. Just the way it works out, uh, two, times 10 is 20, 20 divided by 10 to convert our centimeters to millimeters gives us two diopters of prism in our right. Our left, eight times 10, 80 divided by 10 to convert gives us eight diopters in our left. What prism direction do we have? We have base up, base up, because we're looking below the optical center, the 180 line, we're looking down towards that segment. Base up, base up prism cancels. So I take my eight, I subtract my two, and I end up with six diopters of base up in the left, total prismatic error or vertical imbalance in this pair of lenses, the two eyes working together, the total result. If I need to overcome that, if I need to come up with that six diopters to counteract that and bring those two objects back into focus and fusion, I'm going to put six diopters of base up on my right lens, it'll look just like that. That will make it match my left, bring everything back to what I need, and that person can wear a pair of glasses and use a reading area or bifocal without double vision. 
One last thing to mention about slab off. I do need you to know that it comes in both conventional and free form. That's right. At Laramie K, we put our years of experience and our free form technology to work and we make a digital or free form slab off. The advantages are a lens that has a smoother transition where that ledge begins. So it is more cosmetically appealing when you're looking at it. It's easier to wear because that blend is smoother and it is actually thinner, hence lighter as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you're watching us on Facebook, be sure to share it with as many people as you can. If you enjoy these free videos, why not join OpticianWorks.com as a full member where you'll have access to a whole lot more great optician training. Thanks.